morning, First Press. Bo Mircea here, Associate Pastor at First Press in Joliet. And as always, it's my great pleasure to welcome you into worship today. We keep thinking about the Book of Acts. We've been studying the Book of Acts, and one of the important parts of the Book of Acts is the part where the believers meet together. They pray together and they praise God together. There is so much power in that action because out of that comes not only outreach to the whole community, but the, the community itself grows in their faith. So, when you think about Sunday worship, I want to encourage you to, to think about this element. We come together to worship. We recognize who we are in front of God. We give God praise and in return, God gives us strength. God gives us faith. So it is important and not only important, but it's such a deep and powerful thing for us to be together in worship. So today, as we worship, I want to encourage you to open your hearts and minds to what God is going to do. Would you pray with me? Lord, we give you praise because you are a good God. We look around us and we see your goodness. We see your love through the many people you put in our lives. And as we gather as a community of faith, we see your goodness in the promise of your word, in the prayers, in the spoken word, in the music. Those are reminders of who you are. So as we worship today, Lord, let your spirit bring us together and let your sp spirit start that fire brand new in our hearts so we can be your disciples. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. Beloved, this is the time to worship. Let us worship. The Lord is with you. with you while you're worshiping with your grown-ups. I want to talk to you about asking questions. I mean, how do you learn about things if you're in school? Or uh, let me put it this way, if you're trying to do a math problem and you don't understand how to do it, what do you do? You ask your teacher, right? Or if you're doing homework at home, you ask one of your grown-ups or you ask a friend. Asking questions is important. And you know, when we read the Bible, when we read about people who met Jesus, they had questions and they asked them. Sometimes they asked each other, sometimes they asked Jesus. 
and they had their questions answered. But you know, God doesn't expect us to know everything just automatically. He expects that we'll have questions. And that's why he put all of us together in each other's lives. That's why you have all these grown-ups in your family and your friends. That's why you have older brothers and sisters or older cousins so they can answer these questions that you might have. It's really important to get the answers, especially when they're answers about Jesus. A lot of you probably have a children's Bible, and I hope that if you do, that you're reading it often. When you read it, and you have a question, I want you to ask somebody. I want you to ask your, your parents or your grandparents or Pastor Bo or me or somebody else at church, maybe a Sunday school teacher. Ask them to explain it to you. And then you can maybe explain it to a sibling or to a friend who's a little bit younger. You know, if you don't have a children's Bible at home, um, come and talk to, to one of us and we can let your grown-ups know a really good Bible together. Maybe we can help out with getting one. So we know that in school, one of the ways that we learn things is, is by reading. And the same is true in church. We learn by reading the Bible together. We learn by having um, the Bible explained to us. That's what that's what the pastors do when we stand up in front and we talk about what scripture said. And there's one thing that I want you to always remember from the Bible when you open your children's Bible. It is the story, really, about Jesus. And it's the story of how much God loves you. It's a whole book about how much God loves the people that he made. And he made all of us. I want you to remember that, and I want you to, um, I don't know, I guess I want you to ask lots of questions. In fact, the next time you see me, I want you to have a question in mind to ask me about something you read in your Bible. Now maybe, maybe I won't know the answer right away, and I'll have to think about it or go ask some questions myself, or maybe I will know the answer and we can talk about it a little bit. But Jesus likes it when you ask questions about him because he loves you and he wants you to know all about him. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for these children that are hearing your word and for all the grown-ups and people who love them and want them to know more about you. We thank you that you are with us and we ask, Lord, that as summertime gets underway that you would, would keep us all safe and that we would find ways to read and grow even when we're busy playing with our friends and enjoying the summertime. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Bye guys, I'll see you later. Hi First Press. Uh, for community updates, before I do anything else, I just wanna uh, give a shout out to all the fathers out there in the congregation celebrating today, Father's Day. Uh, it's, it's an honor for me to know so many of you and to be encouraged by, um, by your actions, by your deeds, by, um, by who you are. Um, I see the way you uh, connect with your families and I want to encourage you to keep doing the good work that God has called you to do. So happy Father's Day to you. Um, for a couple updates, uh, as I mentioned last week, uh, after session met and we talked about all the new rules about uh, uh, reopening there's a lot of conversation that is going on with uh, regarding what that looks like well the the big plan is uh, that uh, towards September we'll be in a in a full uh, opening with uh, looking forward to two services uh, a nine o'clock and a 1030 with everything that that involves uh, also, we're, we're trying to work through all the consoles, to work through all the details regarding uh, food uh, services, you know, if uh, we're going to have Wednesday nights, how will Wednesday night look like? If we have coffee hour, how is, uh, how is coffee hour going to work? So there is a lot of that going on. But the important thing is uh, right now, Sunday morning should be as close to what you know 
uh, on at first press. So you're welcome to come anytime. Just come and uh, uh, and join us in worship in person on Sunday morning. Uh, we'll love to to have you uh, there. Um, a, a little side note. Uh, by the way, I, I said before that the guilt works. Well, this past week we had our um, tailgate dinner and we had more people there and we had a great time. The weather was, was great and not only we got to enjoy each other's fellowship, but we got, I got to know people a little better. So for me it was a big win. And um, I will encourage you to put that on your calendar for the first and the third uh, Wednesday. Uh, of the month and uh, um, so next one it will be July 7th if my cal calendar is right and uh, that that should be a good uh, good thing um, for um, all the children out there Sunday school is open so if you come to church on Sunday uh, you can go to your class and uh, meet Miss Kaylee and Ellen and uh, just get back to to discovering the goodness of God right uh, also vacation Bible school is going to be live uh, starting tomorrow uh, and if you did not sign up it's not too late to do that please stop by the church pick up a bag with all the goodies for vacation Bible school and um, you should be good to go so um, that's all in terms of uh, community updates today but uh, I, I want to put a challenge out to you I, I didn't do this uh, in a while so here's the challenge pick up the phone and call somebody uh, that you, uh, somebody that you did not see in a while, or maybe you did see them and you think you know what maybe they need a word of encouragement. So pick up the phone and call somebody and tell them God loves you. You have an awesome week.
we come now to a time of offering. When you think about offering, you, you have to, to think about offering in relationship of who we are to the greater good, right? To uh, relation, think in terms of who you are and how blessed you are. When you think about offering in, in, in the full spectrum of, of the scriptures, you see that offering becomes, from the very beginning, one of those things that people of faith do. They bring an offering to God from their crops from the very beginning. Uh, they bring an offering to God every time there is a major event in their lives as a way of saying thanks. But also, as you move through, through the scriptures, you see that the offering becomes an essential part of Christian life, enabling ministry, enabling people like Paul to go and preach the gospel. And through doing that, people of faith becomes, become partners, partners in the work of the gospel. So I want to say to you, thank you for being a partner uh, in, in this ministry in everything that we do here at First Press. And I want to encourage you to take that time and look at your life in relationship to God, in relationship to what God is doing through you in the world and in a community like Joliet and through, through First Press. So, this is a time for us to bring our offerings and I invite you to bring your offering with a, with a joyful heart. At this time we continue to worship online and in person so we sometimes bring our offering in, uh, at church or send a check but if you want to uh, give your offering online please go to uh, the church website and there is a, a give button and join us join us as we're doing this work of god together would you pray with me lord we're grateful that everything that we are it is because of your grace we understand that lord as people of faith so we pray that our lives will serve you through everything we are and do. So at this time, Lord, bless our, uh, our offerings, bless our lives, bless our work, and help us to be a sacrifice, a sacrifice to your kingdom. In your name we pray, amen.
please pray with me. God, the Bible is a very special book. It is so big and so old. What do these old words mean for our lives today? Please send your spirit so that we can understand your words. Amen. The scripture reading today comes from Psalms 22 through 25 and 31. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who would seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. At the end of the earth, will remember and turn to the Lord. And all the families of the nations will bow down before him. For dominations belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All will go down to the dust will kneel before him. All those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to the people yet unborn, he has done it. Morning prayer is a time for us to come and have a moment of pause. A moment when we think about our life in light of God's light. So today for morning prayers I'm going to pray but also break from time to time to give you room to bring your own prayers before God. Would you join me in prayer? Lord, you look to, to the world and you see the creation of your hands and we are reminded that in Genesis you looked at everything and said it is good and for us today as we look at the world we see that there are indeed so many good things but that we see that there are so many things that are not good so Lord we come before you with with the spirit of repentance for all those things that we have done wrong for the things that uh, made us depart from uh, your perfect plan we failed to love your creation we failed to love the neighbors around us the people that you put in our lives so Lord for that we say Lord have mercy as we think about our country as we think about our communities about our lives Lord we recognize that we need love we need to be bigger people living by kingdom principles by going and sacrificing who we are as a sacrifice unto you so Lord we ask that you will give us the ability the ability to see those places where we can be your hands and feet Lord have mercy as people of faith Lord you put us in a community of faith a community that we want to see grow and we pray Lord for the ministry of the church we pray for the people that come in contact with the ministry at First Press and we pray Lord that they will discover your love we, sp we pray especially today for all the children that come through uh, the lunch program or the different groups that come and meet under, uh, under First Press we pray Lord that they will not only find shelter but they will find you and hope in you. Lord, have mercy. We continue to pray, Lord, for those that are not with us and uh, 
people that we love dearly and will love to see your light shine in their lives. So Lord, we pray that you'll open their hearts through your spirit, that somewhere in there, a seed of your word will be present and that seed can grow and produce faith. So for those that don't know you yet, Lord, or just know of you but don't know who you are, we pray this morning, Lord, have mercy. And Lord, we continue to pray for those that are close to us, people that we love so dearly, that are struggling, struggling either due to illness or depression, loneliness, or just struggle in their lives. We pray, Lord, for your comfort to be with them. We pray for your strength to be their strength. And we pray, Lord, that we can be close to them to speak words of encouragement and to help where we can help. So, Lord, for those people we pray this morning, Lord, have mercy. Lord, we commit our lives into your hands. And for everything we are and do, we pray just one thing. Let us be your children and let the world see you through everything we do. In your name we pray, Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And can it be, and can it be, amazing love, how can it be, and can it be that I should gain an interest in the Savior's blood? Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued, amazing love, how can it be? His Father's throne above, so free, so infinite His grace, emptied Himself of all but love, and bled for Adam's helpless race. Can it be amazing love? How can it be? No condemnation, no, I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head. 
clothed in righteousness divine. Bold I approach eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. to die for me. Have you ever been reading through the Bible and been like, huh, I wonder what that means exactly? You see, the words of scripture were written a very, very long time ago, and they were written to a culture that, for the most part, is vastly different from the culture in which we now find ourselves. So it's no wonder that sometimes we find that we're just a little bit confused. Now, the passage that we're reading today is not unknown, but it's also not one of the best well-known scripture passages. And so, as we read it today, you might find some questions come to mind. Questions like, who is Philip? Or, what is an Ethiopian eunuch doing reading the Bible? Or, or okay, I understand that he's reading the Bible, but why is he sitting there in his chariot reading it out loud? Questions are okay. In fact, questions are good because when we have a question and then we look for the answer, we grow as people. And when we look for the answer when it comes to scripture or to our faith, we grow in our faith. We grow in our knowledge of Jesus. And the more we learn and grow, the more we find we can help other people along the way, especially, especially when it comes to Jesus. You know, there are more people in the world today, well, in particular, there are more people in the, this country today that don't know Jesus, that don't understand why we want to have him in our life, why it's so important that we know him. And even among our worship together, some of us maybe don't know him yet and we're curious. Some of us are brand new Christians and we're just now learning. Some of us maybe are just now figuring out how to, to use our faith, to rely on our faith in our daily lives. Other of us are trying to teach our children about Jesus. And there may be some that know a lot about scripture, that know a lot about the Bible, but they found that they will never know everything. And so they are still learning. That's one of the really cool things about when we worship together. It means that when we have a question, we can kind of talk about it after church. We can get together with other people who want to know Jesus, and we can try to figure it out. And when we do that, when we dig for answers, we grow closer to Jesus, and we go closer to one another. We all have questions sometimes, and we all have some of the answers to those questions sometimes. Something for us to work toward is feeling comfortable with both the having and the answering. It's becoming confident enough in our faith to respond to people when they have questions about Jesus or when they say, well, why do you go to church every Sunday? Why is that important to you? You know, a fancy word for that is, is evangelism, but it's really just sharing with people the core of who we are. It's really just telling people why Jesus matters in 
our lives. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be this long theological dissertation about who Jesus is. And the more we, we practice doing that, over time it just becomes a part of who we are. It becomes almost just like breathing. And today, as we continue with the book of Acts, as we think about the opportunities we have in this new normal as we start to enter this post-COVID status, I've titled the sermon, Do You Understand? But as I prepared it, I kind of wish that I had titled it, Do We Understand? Because we're all on this together. We're all learning this together. But I invite you now to hear the word of God. I'm reading this morning from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all the treasury of the Kandaki, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship and on his way home was sitting in his chariot reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot and heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you are reading? Philip asked. How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the pasture of scripture the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who the prophet is talking about, himself or someone else? Then Philip began with that very passage of, uh, that very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus. As they traveled along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What can stand in the way of my being baptized? And he gave orders to stop the chariot. Then both Philip and the eunuch went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord suddenly took Philip away, and the eunuch did not see him again, but he went on his way rejoicing. Philip, however, appeared at Azotus and traveled all about, preaching the gospel in all the towns until he reached Caesarea. My friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You know, there's a thing called readability. And what it means essentially is how easy it is for one to comprehend text. Think about a story that goes like this. Charlotte wants to build a fort. She gets a big cardboard box. She gets some strong tape. Her dad helps too. He gets some scissors. He cuts the cardboard. He makes windows and doors. They set it up in the backyard. Her brother wants to play. Her sister wants to play. Her friends want to play. Charlotte and her dad look at each other. They need a bigger fort. Now listen to the same story again. Charlotte desires to construct a military fortress, but is lacking suitable material. However, she is soon able to acquire a cardboard box and with the help of industrial grade packing tape, shears and staples, the child manages to erect a citadel of such impressive proportions that her siblings and the neighborhood children are all eager to participate. Soon, Charlotte and her father, who assisted in the project, come to the startling realization that a larger edifice is indicated. Now, there's a big difference in the way those two stories were presented. And of course, most of us fall along a whole spectrum of, of the kind of reading material we prefer and how we prefer that words are presented to us. But the point is, we want to be able to understand what we're reading. And if we can't understand it, we want a way to figure it out. And that's what's going on in our reading today. You see, the Ethiopian is reading from the book of Isaiah and he's struggling. And he's not reading a story like David and Goliath or Moses being put in the river and sent away to safety. Oh no, 
he's making his way through Isaiah. Now, I love Isaiah, but I gotta tell you, it is not light reading. It's actually kind of surprising that the Ethiopian was reading at all because the, the literacy rate in Ethiopia at that time, as well as the surrounding regions, was only about 1%. And so that's why back in the first century when people would go worship at the synagogue, only one person, usually the leader, would read from the ancient scrolls that contain God's word. And you know, truth be told, we live in such a fast-paced, distracting culture that, that for many of us, the only time we read the word of God is when it's read aloud in church. You know, back in the first century, most people weren't expected to read. School wasn't a high priority, and the majority of folk just went into the family business. And of course, there was no printing press yet, so it's not like books and Bibles were just lying around everywhere. Let's go back to our Bible story. Philip asked the Ethiopian dignitary, Ethiopian dignitary in the chariot, what is it that you don't understand? What is it that you're struggling with? And the Ethiopian looked at Philip and he said, everything. I'm struggling with everything. And boy, do I know how he feels. You know, I remember when I went to my very first Bible study, I was afraid to even yawn for fear that something stupid would come out of my mouth. But as they say, there are no stupid questions. And when it comes to Jesus, that's true. When it comes to Jesus, we need to ask and ask and ask. And Philip, with patience, began to explain the passage from Isaiah. And he took it from there straight to Jesus. And Philip was really good at this. He was, after all, known as Philip the Evangelist, but we can learn from him. You see, Philip started with the scripture. He started with what the Bible said, and so should we. And from there, if we start with a question from the Bible, there's often an opportunity to share what our faith has done in our lives. There don't have to be authorities on scripture, but we need, to be, we need to be authentic and real about our faith. We need to be authentic and real about how we have experienced the Jesus of the Bible in our lives. And sometimes we're not going to know the answer to someone's question about scripture. And that's okay. That's okay because that's our cue to go and find the answer. So this part of Acts, it's about learning and evangelism. Now evangelism, like we said, is just a big word for sharing Jesus with others. Evangelism sounds overwhelming, but it's actually something that we can do daily. It's just sharing. And we share things in many areas every day of our lives. I was reading a commentary about this passage in Acts this week as I was getting the message ready. You know, I, I always start with the Bible, but then I use so many resources. I use so many resources because I want to make sure that I understand exactly what I'm reading so that I can then share it with you. But anyway, this particular commentary had a section called Guidelines for Personal Evangelism. And I thought, hmm, that sounds kind of like a manual for how to use an appliance or something. But I started reading through it, and I found that it's actually very helpful. It was really kind of like a section that said, hey, keep these things in mind when you feel like you have a chance to talk about why you're a Christian or how you experience Jesus in your life. And it said things like, we're doing what God tells us to do, what God wants us to do when we share our faith with people, even in the most simple, non-threatening ways. Maybe you felt that little nudge to invite somebody to church, or, or maybe you felt like, hey, I should invite Susie to come join me um, at that tailgate dinner or at this mission thing that we're doing. I wonder, I wonder if Susie might enjoy that. I think, I think she might. I think Susie might like that. Friends, if, if that's how you're feeling, then you should invite Susie. And this manual also said that hearts are prepared by God because God knows what he's doing. We just get to be one piece of the puzzle. I heard about a young pastor that would go 
um, as part of his ministry to uh, a maximum security prison. And he would meet, you know, some of the really bad guys. He would meet prisoners that did really bad things. And one day he was meeting with this one particular prisoner. And while the young pastor was meeting with him, the prisoner accepted Jesus. And it was an exciting moment for both of them. But lest the pastor think that he himself had done something spectacular, the prisoner said, now preacher, don't go get in a big head because I have accepted Christ. You're just the 25th man. You see, many had shared their faith with this prisoner before this young pastor went to visit with him. God had been at work all along softening this man's heart, preparing him to accept Jesus until this pastor, this 25th man, came on the scene. I promise you, friends, the whole of someone else's faith will never rest on your shoulders alone. And last, it says that you should start with their questions, but make sure that the Bible is your foundation. Sometimes we, or maybe I should say sometimes I, I, I think I know what questions somebody else needs answers, but I, but I don't. I don't know what questions they need answered unless I let them ask me and I actually hear the question. And guys, we're all on this, this faith journey together. We're entering this, this new time in the history of, of the country, in the history of the world, and, and in the history of Christianity. We're all teacher and we're all student. So we need to ask ourselves, what is it? What is it that we don't understand? What is it that you don't understand? And if your answer is everything, that's okay. Take a good look at the text. Find a good teacher or a solid resource so you can learn more about the original context so you can apply the so what to your life today. Ask yourself what this text is saying, what it's teaching you about Jesus. I can promise you that questions about the Bible, questions about Jesus, are always worth asking. They're always worth answering. They're always worth discussing. May God bless you as we continue to ponder the words of our Lord in the Bible. Amen. Oh.